Hello, my name is Kevin, and I'm a malacologist. Wait, sorry, that's the wrong meeting. Uh, anyway, for those unfamiliar with the term, malacology is a study of mollusks, the second largest group of animals on Earth, numbering about 200,000 species. Freshwater mussel is a common name applied to a single lineage of six different families of bivalves found in all continents except Antarctica, and mussels are very poorly understood and much needs to be done to clarify how many species exist worldwide. To that end, I'm going to give you an overview of the Mussel Project, an ongoing study aimed at the global revision of the group. And here's a shot of our web page with a What's New feature, a Mussel of the Month, and a Facebook page for all the kids out there. There are two main components of the project, and the first of which involves photographing every mussel shell from 17 mollusk collections around the world and capturing the locality data from the specimen's label, as shown in the lower right in this slide. We then database the images and assign geographic coordinates to map their distribution. And to date, we've amassed over 26,000 images, and many of the specimens were collected in the 19th century by explorers uh, like Burton and Speak and their contemporaries. The fieldwork component of the project has taken us to some exotic locales. We recently sampled the Congo River, which is the second longest river in Africa, the second largest in the world in terms of drainage area and discharge, and in places over 720 feet deep. Our collecting in the Congo is centered around Malebo Pool, formed by a large rapids located just downstream of the twin cities of Brazzaville and the Republic of Congo and Kinshasa and the DRC. Travel in the area was problematic, to say the least. Uh, we conducted fieldwork in the Amazon in 2010, collecting near Iquitos, Peru, the largest city in the world that can't be reached by a road. And this was a joint expedition of malacologists and ichthyologists, and amazingly, few fights broke out and no one was jailed. <laughs> uh, a synthesis of the museum and fieldwork has resulted in distribution maps and photos of 850 species of mussels around the world, as demonstrated here on our webpage. And this past October, we, the Mussel Project celebrated its centennial. Mussel diversity is not evenly distributed. North America leads with about 300 species, followed by Southeast Asia at 220, and Eurasia and Australia are rather depauper with fewer than 80 species between them. What hooked me on mussels is, the, is their unique life cycle. Larval mussels are parasitic and must attach to the gills or fins of a host fish where they remain for a month or so, eventually falling off, hopefully landing in a favorable habitat to complete the life cycle. And mussels have evolved some amazing adaptations to lure a fish into becoming a host. In this mussel, the larvae are packaged in a Trojan horse resembling a small fish, released into the water where they're gobbled up by a predator thinking they have, have lunch. And mussels have been culturally important to humans for hundreds of years. Native Americans use mussels as food, scrapers, hoes, spoons, and Large shell deposits can be found at archaeological sites in the southeast and midwestern U.S. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, vast numbers of mussels were harvested to make pearl buttons. Button making was a multi-million dollar industry, but collapsed with the advent of plastics in the 1940s, allowing some populations to recover from this unregulated harvest. In the 50s, the Japanese developed a new use for mussels, cultured pearls. Mussel shells are finished into beads and inserted into oysters to serve as nuclei for cultured pearls. After a year or so, the oysters cut open and the man-made pearl extracted for sale. In recent mussel surveys, have documented significant population declines and various anthropogenic factors have contributed to making them probably the most imperiled or most endangered group of animals in North America. Many mussels have been designated as state or federally endangered species, and although the official list is bleak, with 26% of the fauna listed, an analysis done by the American Fisheries Society concluded that 70% of the fauna is really in need of conservation. So how do they compare to other groups? Mussels and aquatic species in general are in far greater peril than their terrestrial counterparts. 30 to 70% of aquatic species are in need of conservation, compared to 10 to 15% of terrestrial species. The exotic zebra mussel was introduced from Eastern Europe through ballast water release in the Great Lakes in the early 1980s and has wreaked havoc on freshwater mollusks and rivers across the U.S., wiping out native mussels in many, many areas. In 1992, the Freshwater Mollusk Conservation Society was formed and has about 400 members dedicated to the study and conservation of mollusks, and hopefully together we can solve some of the problems and preserve this interesting group of animals. Thank you very much.